Good evening. Good evening, and welcome to the Lord's house. Uh, after a very beautiful day today that we experienced, it's good to be in the Lord's house for our midweek Lenten service. And welcome to all of you tonight. I think we're on Facebook Live. Yes, we are. So welcome to those who are watching wherever they, wherever you are yeah, on Facebook today. Um, we are in a series called Witnesses to Christ, and we've heard, of course, from uh, John the Baptist. Then last week you heard of, of the, old, the uh, biblical character of Malchus. And tonight we're going to look at the character of Mary, the sister to uh, Martha and Lazarus. And uh, we're going to hear that uh, message of love uh, that she had for her Lord. And the word that we're going to learn tonight is the word give. It's a positive word. We're going to hear why that is. So may the Lord bless us as we hear his word this evening. Uh, you may have noticed we do not have an organist tonight, so we're going to be singing to the uh, CDs of hymns. So we're going to need your voices to really carry us or help carry us this evening, as always, of course, not just with the CDs, but we have when Allie is here to play. Um, but most especially when we sing the seri uh, our series hymn, uh, which is uh, 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 right before the sermon, sermon hymn, Behold the Lamb of God, John said, there's four stanzas there, um, but the music will stop after stanza three, so that means we're going to sing stanza four solo. We did this uh, a couple weeks ago for our midweek uh, Ash Wednesday service at the, at the one, uh, 1030 service, so um, I'll, help, I'll help us in that when we get to that, so just keep in mind uh, when we come to that hymn. Also, when we have our offering, uh, reception of our offering, um, there's going to be a hymn played during that time, but we won't be singing that because obviously there's no words there for us. But that's just kind of to keep us some, some music as, we, uh, as the baskets are passed around for our offerings. Take note of that. Other than that, please uh, follow along in our service and uh, 
respond with the responses as indicated. Our opening hymn is hymn number 433, Glory Be to Jesus. Now may our Lord God graciously bless us as he comes to us through his word this evening. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we continue our Lenten journey, we see the contrast between Mary and Judas. The contrast between generosity and greed. The contrast between giving and getting. The contrast between joy and jealousy. Mary points us to the joys of giving. Mary points us to the joys of Jesus. While we would like to think of ourselves as generous, joyful, and giving, we admit that our lives do not live up to the perfect standard God expects. Still, our Heavenly Father invites us to return to Him, confessing our shortcomings and sins. Heavenly Father, we confess that we have committed sins of greed, jealousy, and selfishness. We have sinned against you in thoughts, words, and actions. Have mercy on us, Lord. Forgive us, renew our generosity, and lead us out of greedy selfishness. Restore to us the joy of your salvation. Mighty God, in his generous mercy, has given his Son to die and rise for you. On account of Jesus' death on the cross and resurrection from the grave, God has forgiven us all. The called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are generously forgiven and joyfully restored. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. 
We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading for this evening's service and message is from the 11th chapter of Proverbs, beginning at verse 24. One gives freely, yet grows all the richer. Another withholds what he should give and only suffers want. Whoever brings blessing will be enriched, and one who waters will himself be watered. The people curse him who holds back grain, but a blessing is on the head of him who sells it. Whoever diligently seeks good seeks favor, but evil comes to him who searches for it. Whoever trusts in his riches will fall, but the righteous will flourish like a green leaf. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter. The point is this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has made up his mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. As it is written, He has distributed freely, He has given to the poor, His righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for all your generosity, which through us will produce thanksgiving to God. For the ministry of this service is not only supplying the needs of the saints, but is also overflowing in many thanksgivings to God. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In our gospel, as we continue our series, will serve as the basis for the message this evening. Six days before the Passover, Jesus therefore came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. So they gave a dinner for him there. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those reclining with him at the table. Mary, therefore, took a pound of expensive ointment made from pure nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, he who was about to betray him, said, Why was this ointment not sold for three hundred denarii and given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. And having charge of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. Jesus said, Leave her alone, so that she may keep it for the day of my burial. The poor you always have with you, but you do not always have me. When the large crowd of the Jews learned that Jesus was there, they came, not only on account of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. The chief priests made plans to put Lazarus to death as well, because on account of him, many of the Jews were going away and believing in Jesus. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated as we now continue with our series hymn, Behold the Lamb of God, John said.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text tonight, as mentioned, is our gospel from John 12, verses 1 through 11. As we examine this evening the witness of Mary, who was the sister of Lazarus and Martha. This is God's holy word and made dear brothers and sisters in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Marie Kondo has written four books on, get this, organizing, which collectively have sold over 30 million copies. They have been translated from Japanese into Korean, Chinese, French, German, English, and more. Her 2011 book, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, the Japanese Art of Decluttering and Organizing has been published in more than 30 countries. It was a bestseller in Japan, Europe, and the United States. And again, get this, in 2015, Marie Kondo was listed as one of Time Magazine's 100 most influential people in the world. She has struck gold because she realizes that people are surrounded by so much complexity and clutter. You think? The story is told of a father who was teaching his three-year-old daughter the Lord's Prayer. And she would repeat the lines after him. And finally, she, she decided to go solo. And so fa the father listened with pride as she carefully enunciated each word right up to the very end of that prayer, of course. Lead us not into temptation, she prayed, and deliver us from email. <laughs> deliver us from email. I was just talking tonight. I got a bunch of emails in my deleted box I don't clean out. So I got a lot of clutter even in that, and maybe you do as well. But complexity and clutter, I think we understand that very, very well. Well, anyway, Marie Kondo's method of organizing is known as the KonMari method. And it consists of gathering all of your belongings, one category at a time, and then keeping those things that bring sparks of joy. The word in Japanese is tokimeku, which means flutter, throb, pal palpitate, sparks of joy. This Lent, as you know, we are meeting witnesses to Christ's passion as recorded in John's Gospel. And today, John introduces us to the Marie Kondo of the Bible. And who would that be? Well, that would be Mary. Mary, the sister of Martha and Lazarus. Mary, who helps us simplify and declutter. Mary, who helps us experience tokimeku, sparks of joy. How does Mary do it? Well, Mary replaces the word get with give. That's it. Replace get with, er, with give. It's pretty simple. You see, get only clutters things. Get only confuses things. Get only makes us miserable. You've heard of these phrases before with the word get in them. Like get ahead, get back get even, get more, and whatever you do, get revenge. But Mary replaces get with give. Mary gives freely. Mary gives extravagantly. And most important of all, Mary gives joyfully. 
Let me ask you this evening, are you stuck in an emotional rut? Have you lost your zest and zeal? Do you want to feel or be alive again? Do you want sparks of joy? If you do, then replace get with give. Here's the context to our reading this evening. In John chapter 11, Lazarus dies. And after four days, as, our, as the God's word tells us, and Martha was suspecting already, he was stinking up to high heaven, because when you stay dead for a while, your body starts to decay. And so Jesus comes, and he stands in front of the tomb, and the first thing he does is he weeps, he cries, he mourns, because this is not right, this is not the way it's supposed to be. But then he does something that is, again, wonderful and great that our Lord Jesus can do. He shouts, Lazarus, come out. And of course, Lazarus comes stumbling out of his tomb, alive, with his shroud still around him, like a used cocoon. Now for the Jewish leaders, this was the last straw, because by raising Lazarus from the dead, Jesus now moves from the category of what we might call manageable nuisance to the category of serious threat. In John 11, verse 53, instead of joy and gladness and thanksgiving for what they had seen, they say, it says this, from that day on, they, the Jewish leaders, made plans to put Jesus to death. And so Christ's days are numbered. As we come into John chapter 12, Jesus has a price on his head. And by the way, so does Lazarus, poor guy. The text of the Bible says the chief priest made plans to put Lazarus to death as well because on account of him, many of the Jews were going away and believing in Jesus. We must destroy Jesus, and we must destroy all the evidence, and that means we must also destroy Lazarus. That's the context, but now here's the cost. Mary therefore took a pound of expensive ointment made from pure nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. How much did that ointment cost? Well, we're told in John 12, verse 5, that it's worth a year's income. Wow, a year's income. Imagine dropping a year's income just like that. Imagine doing something like that in our current economy with gas prices going through the roof and everything else. What's going on here? How could she do such a thing? It's because, you see, get is being replaced with give. And boy, is it ever. The context is death for Jesus and death for Lazarus. The cost, everything. The comparison, it's between Mary and Judas, Judas Iscariot. Mary is extravagant. Mary is excessive. Mary's gone way over the top. And Judas, again, listen to these words. Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, he who was about to betray him, said, Why was this ointment not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. And having charge of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. You see, Judas is threatened. His entire world comes crashing down, all because Mary lives by one word, give. And so the comparison couldn't be more black and white. Mary is a generous disciple. Judas is a greedy disciple. Mary gives with abandon. Judas is miserly to a T. Mary sacrifices financially. Judas won't even give a nickel. Mary shows her faith with actions. Judas talks a good game, giving money to the poor, but we know that he doesn't mean it. Mary loves the word give, but all Judas can do is get. Get more, get ahead, and get on top, and it's going to kill him. It all leads to the cross. Jesus says, leave her alone so that she may keep it for the day of my burial. The day of my burial. 
Mary understands the cross. Mary believes these words, what we heard when the series started in John 1, 29. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. She believes John 2, verse 13, which says, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. She understands John 3, 14, when Jesus tells Nicodemus, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Mary gives Jesus everything she has, and in so doing, she prepares Jesus to give everything he has. And the room is filled with the smell of this costly perfume. Smells are powerful, aren't they? The smell of a rose catches your nose. Ladies, maybe that, that's with you. If you smell a rose and you remember suddenly that first date you had back in high school when he brought you a dozen roses. Or maybe it's the scent of your grandmother's perfume and memories of her come flooding back. You see, while words go to the thinking part of our brain, smells go to the emotional part. And that's why a whiff of grandma's perfume brings back our emotions for grandma and perhaps not a few tears falling down the face because smells can stir in us some pretty powerful emotions. And that's also true for our Lord Jesus. Mary's strong perfume lingers with Jesus throughout Holy Week as he makes his way to the cross. Even on Good Friday, the fragrance of Mary's perfume still lingers. And then perhaps, just perhaps, when Jesus gives himself completely all of his love and mercy and grace, holding nothing back for us, he might have still had faintly smelled that sweet fragrance. A reminder that Mary had marked him with one word, the word give. Both Matthew 26, 13 and Mark 14, verse 9 state, Wherever this gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. And why is that? Why is that? Because the kingdom of God isn't about hoarding and stockpiling. The kingdom of God isn't about being chintzy and cheap. The kingdom of God isn't about get, because get will kill us. It will kill us always and forevermore. But God's kingdom is about one word, alone, and that's word give. Give, and then what? Toki meku, sparks of joy. As Jesus himself says, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Mary, the sister of Martha and Lazarus, shows us that the kingdom of God is about giving lavishly, giving generously, and giving joyfully, and giving completely. Wherever this gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. You know that Jesus never says this about anyone else, only about Mary. Thanks to Mary, you and I can boil down life as a child of God to one simple word, one powerful and life-changing word. And I challenge you to try it out. I challenge you to think about this in a world that's all about getting and keeping, and hoarding. Because it will change everything for you. It will change everything in your thoughts about what this gospel message is all about. And it's going to create so much joy. You know what that word is. G-I-V-E. Give. May God grant that we learn and practice it all. His glory. Amen. And now may God's peace, which does surpass all human understanding, guard our hearts and our minds through faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. With that, we stand and we sing the Magnificat, My Soul Rejoices.
Please be seated as we honor our Lord with our tithes and offering. We now continue with the prayers, beginning with the Kyrie. Please stand. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Taught to pray, our Lord Jesus taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God, in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs. Lord Jesus Christ, by your death on the cross, you forgive the sins of all people. Help us to have compassion on others and reflect your generous love to them, for all people are created in your image. On our hearts, imprint your image. Blessed Jesus, King of grace. Lord, give us the strength to forgive others as you have forgiven us. On our hearts, imprint your image. Blessed Jesus, King of grace. Lord, embolden us to be generous with all the good gifts you have given us. Prevent us from any greed or dishonesty that would harm others and be a poor reflection upon you. On our hearts, imprint your image. Blessed Jesus, King of grace. Lord, instill in us a love for the poor that is not rooted in our superiority over them or in some vain hope of making ourselves feel better. Rather, teach us how to live or how to love in true humility and service. On our hearts, imprint your image. Blessed Jesus, King of grace. O oh Lord, we pray for the leaders of this nation and of all the nations throughout the world, that your wisdom would be upon them for the health and the welfare of all people. On our hearts, imprint your image. Blessed Jesus, King of grace. Lord, we pray for all Christians throughout the world. As we follow you on whatever journeys you send us, remind us that we are united with you and with all who follow you by baptism in your death and resurrection. On our hearts, imprint your image. Blessed Jesus, King of grace. Lord, be near to all those who are sick, injured, and recovering, those that we name before you in our hearts and our minds. Give them your healing and patience. 
on our hearts, imprint your image. Blessed Jesus, King of grace. Lord, send comfort and hope to all those who grieve. And again, we pray for those who are on our hearts and our minds this evening. Grant that the power of your resurrection to eternal life shines through the darkness of grief. On our hearts, imprint your image. Blessed Jesus, King of grace. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. You may be seated for our closing hymn.